Hey guys, welcome back to Love Is, the podcast that explores the profound and extraordinary world of love. I'm your host, Erin. And I am Ayana. And we are thrilled to have you join us on this beautiful journey. Let's talk about all that love is. Today we have one of my really, 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 really good friends. Um, we do a lot of our content together. I met Carrie in 2016. Um, he's hilarious. He does all of the scripted comedy pieces with me. He's super funny, super amazing friend. Carrie boy, you guys. Carrie the legacy, excuse me. He's a rebrand. It's been happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say, dang, man. She Sorry. done threw the, the childhood name on me. It's Carrie the legacy. Forgive me. Okay, it's clear. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> How you doing? I'm amazing. Yes, thank you for joining Yay. us today. I'm so happy. Today, we're going to do a little game before we get into the conversation. So, we just need you to guess whether these two options are going to be toxic or not toxic. Are you ready? Got you. It's got to be two seconds, though, right away. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> If someone is calling you 10 times back to back. Toxic. Interrupting your partner in a conversation. If they're having a conversation. Toxic. If your partner requests the password to your phone. Toxic. Checking in several times throughout the day on your partner. What was the other one? It's not toxic, but. Non-toxic. Non-toxic, okay. I like that. Becoming friends with your person's friends. Non-toxic. If they want to be her friend. <laughs> <laughs> Not if they want to be. You can't force friendships. Thanks. <laughs> they want to be your friend, cool. Okay, sex only when you want it, but not when they just want it. That's toxic. Yeah. I only want it when she want it. Mm. <laughs> Heard that lady. And let's get into it. <laughs> so, no, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, okay. No, that's great. That's great. Um, I honestly feel like, because some guys are like, I need it right now. Nah, that's guys without self control. Mm, Period. Let's talk about it. Period. <laughs> you know what, though? I do feel like it depends on the person who you're with. I find it interesting that that's even a thing. Like, mm -hmm. Having to decide when to be intimate with your partner or when to engage in sex with your partner based on like whether you want it or they want it. I definitely know that sometimes you're not gonna always be in alignment with the person, but like that's really interesting that that's even like a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. That it's not really in flow. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sometimes you have different things going on. Like you might have just finished a whole meal. You know, you're feeling stuffed, and the partner is just like. What that mean? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you there know? be grudges that be behind that, though. No. You know what I mean? Not like, all the time. Really? Yes. Women will definitely withhold the pee if <laughs> he is on their nerves or on her nerves, for sure. I think that's very, like, per situation. The Okay, you know, y'all, the topic of today is toxic relationships. So we really yeah. going there. Like, we're this is a pretty <laughs> edgy oh, <shit>. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> now he knows. <laughs> right. This is a pretty edgy I episode. I love edgy conversations, so I ain't tripping. So have you been in a toxic relationship before? Absolutely. How many? You say it like that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I've been in plenty. And then I've been the toxic one, and the girl's been toxic for sure. I love that you've taken accountability. Like, yeah. that's really, really great. Yeah, when I was younger, I had it worse. I had to mature. So it was that you were into the toxic dynamic? Like, you, it was, like, thrilling? It was exciting? Like, what is it that kept you not only in the relationship as long as you were, but consistently having that kind of dynamic back-to-back? -back? I mean, to be honest, it's a lot of people that actually like toxic. But a lot of people use it in a bad way. 
toxic can actually be used in a good way sometimes. Like if y'all having arguments and y'all want to have sex during that argument, that could be like toxic, but not really toxic. But that's in a good way. Yeah, because after good. an argument, I mean, it's not good, but if y'all arguing uh -huh. and y'all have sex, I feel like it's gonna be better. I mean, I would much <laughs> rather not have trauma before. Yeah. <laughs> A bonding experience. I'm not saying it has to happen all the time. Yeah. Right. No, but I like, get what you're saying. You're saying like, that's a pleasant little period at the yeah. end of that situation. Yeah, it's like sometimes, <laughs> like, if I'm mad at you, maybe we just want to... Can y'all cuss on him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I love how everyone asks. That's that always like giving the environment. Polite. Yeah. Polite. I'm like, just want to fuck the brains out. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do think that in the past, when I have been in toxic relationships, I will say that the sex was probably the best part about it. Yeah. Unfortunately. That's what's keeping it there. No, but like... If it's keeping it there, then that's not good. <laughs> 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 that's not good. Truth, truth be told, I mean, I feel like that's... It has to be the one thing that's like not being messed up. Because you can't be arguing all the time and not at least enjoying yourself at yeah. some point. When you get to a certain age, you don't want to argue no more. Yeah. yeah. Y'all should know each other. Yeah. I mean, what's the most, the craziest toxic experience, without speaking on the person, like, what is the craziest and toxic experience that was just like, all right, like... Like, you looked up in a situation like, hell no. Yeah. When she was talking to me and a dude at the same time. <gasps> That was the worst. That's insane, though. Absolutely. I mean, it's like it's good and it's bad. But so was I'm, it I'm like? I'm happy that was that was like the worst. But like that's fucked up. Like was yeah. it was it like relationships with both people or it was just you? And it was both. Oh and wow. It's kind of like we wasn't really exclusive, so I couldn't be mad. But I'm like, look, if it's me and him, you could just pick him. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, okay, so did you also like, have somebody me. too on the side or no? I mean, around that time when I was talking to her, I didn't talk to nobody. Oh, okay. She knew that? So you were exclusive. Huh? She knew that? Um, I don't, I don't think she did, but I think I was around enough for her to be like, all right, maybe he want to make this a thing, but... I don't know. That's such an Aquarius thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> For him to like be exclusive. They not even yeah. in a title, but he like, no, nah, I'm only with one person. Like, I feel like Aquarius don't ever be having a whole bunch of people at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I think they be in their moods. Well, I think it's, it's like, like when we really like a person, then we would drop everybody depending on like our peace with that person. Okay, so yeah. you lock it down when you like into the person for real, for real. Yeah, I feel like if one girl is checking everything on the box, then why am I checking Ooh, other people? Period. So you feel like you like husband material? Like you've always felt like that? I definitely can be. I know until, that's right. Until, for real. But it all depends on the mind mentally. Mm -hmm. Because if she not mentally there, then it ain't going to never work. Yeah. Ever. But so you're looking for that? Like, do you feel like you've been looking for that for a while? Like, yeah, I mean, to be being there mentally husband. is the biggest thing for me because everything else don't fall into place. Mm -hmm. Mentally, you got to be there because yeah. I'm not a jealous person and you can't be either. Yeah. Jealousy is definitely the biggest factor in toxic relationships. Like, I have it's had huge. situations where my partner was completely jealous and, you know, acting is our career. But completely jealous of me filming with guys. Mind you, Carrie's a longtime friend. We've been friends since 2016. All of the people who I film with, especially in the comedy world, is heavy male dominated. Mm -hmm. um, there are women involved, but it's very rare that you know they are willing to shoot or create as much as some of the men and stuff that I work with. Mm -hmm. And all of my stuff is a relationship comedy. It's like love, love is. Man. It's definitely about couples and stuff. And it's just been so many times where they have had an issue with, mm -hmm. you know, and it was a very toxic dynamic because I'm like, this is my job at For the real? end of the day. I can't not. Yeah. Was I, I can't. ever in conversations? I mean, I just think in general, <laughs> if you toxic. were a man like me being in that space and, you know, I'm kicking and laughing, of course, they like this dude is. Attractive, you know, you laugh. Mm -hmm. What are y'all over there doing and creating? And it's like, 
you know, but these are still my friends and also my peers that I work with. So, yeah. and I think that's something to touch on because it's like people will create all these scenarios in their head because yeah. they're not in the room. Like they mm -hmm. weren't there when the filming was going on. But that's when you really have to know, like, do I trust my partner? Yeah. Because like, of course this guy would want to have sex with me. Like any guy would want to have sex with me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that shouldn't be your concern. It's, am I really with that or am I loyal to you? Also, so I feel like that needs to be like separated too, you know? I love that you said that. Like the morals should be in alignment. Yeah. Like, if your morals and values aren't in alignment, then you're not really concerned with whether this person is veering off track. Yeah. Because you know that their character isn't going to take them beyond that. Yeah. And I've even heard things as far as, like, you know, a guy saying, like, well, if I were to break up with her, I know he'd get with her. Like, she's a catch. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she's something I would want to get with her. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you shouldn't be worried about that. Just do your job. Focus on you and I like hate people like that. Stop, stop looking at the future. Yeah, when you keep speaking that, it's gonna happen. Exactly. And it's like they gonna snatch you from me. They have the opportunity now. <laughs> you have just put it out there. Has that ever been an issue? I mean, I don't think that you film mostly with women. Like I think you mix it up, but like, uh, has that ever been an issue where like I'm in your workspace? Film with women. Really? Yeah. If you okay. Look down my page is so, mostly women. Yeah. So you do couple of stuff mm -hmm. too. Yeah, I would rather film with women though sometimes because we just make better videos. Mm -hmm. And men, like most of my fan base is men. Okay. So they like looking at women. For sure. And do you think that's been an issue in like those relationships? Like was that ever something that came up? Always an issue. Mm, like it's toxic, always, you feel? Bro. Yeah. How do you navigate toxic. through that? I mean, I try to look at both sides because... If she's not comfortable, then I try to look for ways to make her comfortable. So it'd be like, look, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You need to stop doing that. Because if you keep having that mindset, now I understand if I've been a person in the past mm -hmm. that gave you those thoughts. Mm -hmm. If I gave you those thoughts, then I can't be mad at you. But if I didn't do that, then you shouldn't be doing that. And that's all women need. Like and that I can introduce you to the girls. Yeah. But it's up to you to be in that room and carry yourself. Because yeah. if you don't, then they gonna look like <laughs> looking at you like, oh, she ain't she ain't got her head straight. Yeah. I like my woman to walk into any room and just know that she that bitch. Period. Period. <laughs> and that okay, was that's a... that's words of a husband. Right there. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what? Carrie has been talking like he's been really trying to like put a ring on this soon. I don't know. Maybe oh. it's gonna happen for you in the next five <laughs> years, bruh. Okay. Probably. I Sound mean, like we getting older. Right? We not getting younger, man. Like, I just. In most cases, you just want to have somebody you can have fun with and yeah. live a positive life. Okay, so for people who are in toxic relationships, like, what do you think is the best way to navigate it? Like, do you think um, sticking through it and maybe y'all, like, going to counsel? Like, what do you recommend or how did you navigate those spaces when you were in them? Well, it all depends on who toxic. So if I'm toxic, then I just want to have conversations to understand what I can do to change. If she toxic, it, this might, it might be the same thing, but it might be a little different mm -hmm. because, you know, men and women work differently. But if we both toxic, <sighs> <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, I always offer therapy, even though I've never been in it, but I always wanted to see what it would be like to have couples therapy mm. just to see, like, where they would take our minds. Have you done therapy, like, through family and friends before? I haven't done therapy at all. But just, I'm, like, you know, like, call your mom late night, like, look, ma, we've been well, going yeah, at it, da, know, da 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 I mean, I talked to a few, like, my mom is a big example. I, I could just call her, and if I'm going through it, she already know what I'm going through without mm -hmm. even saying something. Yeah. Like, one time I was going through a toxic situation, I called her, and she was like, what's wrong? And I just started crying. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was like... I don't like I don't like you seeing me cry, but it just it was going it was so much going on around that time, so I I had to talk to her. And yeah. normally I'm good with myself, like I'm my own therapist all the time, so I'm talking to myself, getting through it. But it is certain people that you can talk to to get through and a lot of situations. Safe. Mm. I feel that, but I I genuinely feel like you know that's what our parents and like just 
Like out. Sometimes your parents don't understand. For. They be throwing the wrong information sometimes. Sometimes they do, and that helps us even more because it's just more information. But yeah. I feel like we should like lean more into like our elders because we can even learn, you know, they say like a, a wise man can learn more from a foolish question. It's like even whatever they say is just some type of back and like, nah, I don't want to go that direction. Or yeah, you know what? That does sound like that could work in this moment. Right. But I feel like we should because some people are like scared of traditional therapy, like literally sitting there and talking to a stranger. Yeah, well, I don't care about that. I, as a black person, am encouraging. I will never talk down on therapy. I don't have parents or elders to go back and talk to. So in this season and in this phase, I'm so grateful to have therapy. Like never, ever going to talk down on it. And I think that as black people, we need to know that it's okay to get a therapist like generation generationally i'm breaking those curses those things that my family were doing which is like it's great to talk to them but also Mm -hmm. y'all the reason i'm in this position and i need to heal from a lot of this trauma so i I need some tools from an outsider who's gonna help me to take us to the next level as a family that's the only reason i wanted to do it oh yeah because i have great parents a mom and a dad that give me advice on different things all the time like i can go to my mom for certain things i can go to my dad for certain things and i can go to other people i always listen to people that's older than me yeah i have other, i don't have older brothers i'm the oldest so when i talk to people that i consider older older brothers then i listen to them that's what, what i'm what saying is, yeah. i feel like that's so important because some people aren't comfortable some people are so like for the people who aren't sometimes they feel like they can't talk to anyone and like for for instance, my sister like she was going to a therapist, and she felt like he was such a blank slate who didn't care about what she was really going through. It wasn't healing for her, like you know. And then he like people doctors will prescribe you medicine, and they'll just send you down this rabbit hole where you're like spiraling, and it's never really healing. And you're I just never don't really want to put seen. Yeah. So it's like it's important for people to know, even if you're not comfortable talking to a therapist or booking that appointment or being vulnerable in a public setting, like. You can talk to anyone. Like, you can talk to a teacher. Like, you can talk to a... I talk to my neighbors. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it might just be something random, something that's not even on my mind. I have to learn how to not talk to people. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's important, too. I don't want to put a negative connotation also on therapy because there are so many... Yeah, there's so many people who have a stigma against it already gone... Like, have never been. And just based on the terrible representation that Hollywood has put on therapy... And all of the misinformation, it's just like so much negative, negative, negative towards it that I'm like, I would rather somebody at least give it a shot and like try it versus like thinking like, oh, okay, well, you know, because this person had a bad experience or because this didn't work out for them. It's like you don't have to stick with the same person. You can audition your therapist like you audition your boyfriends or girlfriends. Like you literally don't have to stick with the same person. I highly recommend dating until you find the right therapist. I have someone who is in alignment with my core values. I have an older woman. She's also spiritual. She practices yoga. So she speaks to me in a language that I can understand. And it took me a minute to find her, but I'm so grateful that I did the work to get to her because now the self work that I'm starting to do and the language that I'm starting to use is helping me heal through other relationships in my life, like my friendships or my family ships or my business partnerships. And the just the black community in general, we don't do enough of the emotional work on emotional intelligence and i do encourage just if like like she said talking to family and talking to someone is important but like sometimes the language and the verbiage that these people are able to teach you or the tools that they have it's it's just unmatched like i'm so grateful for it that's true so grateful for it that is very true wow look at you I'm proud of you. <laughs> it's like a lot to get here. <laughs> I know. Gemini. Cause, and I'm only speaking this, too, because I was so anti-therapy. Mm-hmm. Like, this is me speaking from the other side. If y'all could have heard me prior to even going to a therapist, mm-hmm. me in therapy, oh, my God, I would not recognize myself two years ago. And now I'm such a major advocate because of the work that it is doing for my, my heart, my spirit, like, uh, 
But when I found a therapist, I definitely wanted to be a woman, older woman, like mom presence, and just see like where that would go. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I get a man therapist too, but it all depends on my vibe with him, all the energy. Yeah. So do you feel like in therapy moments, in energy, that you've ever been in a toxic relationship where you guys can kind of like be therapeutic to each other and grow and evolve and actually like get to the non-toxic side of things? Sometimes the way that you start is the way that you end. But have you ever ended differently? No, it all ended the same. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, but it what? How you are. phrase that though? Yeah. Therapeutic between two people. There was something that I watched yesterday about this girl saying that um, before she chooses to have sex with her partner, that she prays. I was like, oh, I like that. That's a vibe. <laughs> Like she prayed before? Yes. Like, bless, bless the union. Oh. That's a vibe. I like that. That's it's different. very intentional. Mm-hmm. She get on her knees for two reasons? No, I'm just playing. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys. Oh, God. <laughs> First of all. Oh, my God. Scary. No, but honestly, I thought it was dope because even in a space, if you say it's a toxic relationship, I feel like once you start incorporating that, you start incorporating God and you're looking to his leadership and his foundation to kind of mm -hmm. set the tone for the connection and set the tone for the relationship, then you kind of surrender yourself to his path for you. Yeah. I think my problem was most of the relationships I hopped in, we started off as best friends. And it's like those relationships what? never started. Like I never met any of my girlfriends that was like, let's be together. We just was friends and then we ended up together. That's how every and single relationship. And I was told that was the best way. Yeah, it is, but in some cases, being in a relationship can ruin the friendship. Mm. In some cases, if y'all not right for each other. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in every relationship, you want the friendship because that's what brings y'all together in the Amen. first place. Mm -hmm. But you got to know, like, if that person is good for you or not, mm -hmm. and y'all got to know when to walk away from it. You ever been in a relationship with somebody that you? love but don't like no well see not in particularly because it'll be like a thing that they do or like a habit you know or something what you like mean that. by don't like literally like oh i love you i got your bag i'll give you the shirt off my bag if you hungry i'm gonna feed you if you need a ride i'm gonna take you but you can't stand being around them because they do so much that irritates and vexes your spirit oh well. hell no I don't talk, know how you in a relationship with them. It. Yo, I feel talk like I feel like some I've toxic, had, there's some toxic relationships. You'll even see it in old marriages. Like, say people are out shopping for pottery or something. Like, y'all been together so long, but y'all talk to each other and treat each other like complete shit. Like, you yeah. just don't like your oh, person. No, that ain't a relationship. Like, yeah. you committed, but you don't <laughs> like your they're person. They're there for the house. Like, they're there for the... Y'all the, roommates. Yeah, y'all roommates. <laughs> Those are toxic. I mean, I've seen old... My, I've been in a to roommate old situation. people, they be arguing. Mm. The roommate situation is With when you ex? don't like them. Yes. Oof. I couldn't imagine. Talk that. about it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that well, like? <laughs> the thing is, it's like, like I said, we started off as friends and then we lay together and then you find out, you find out everything when you live with somebody. Everything. Like if you want to be with them, like a man knows if he wants to marry you or not. So then, why do y'all stick around Comfortability. Oh, nah, I'm gonna let him answer. I mean, <laughs> that's one. That is one in a lot of cases, especially if y'all living somewhere expensive and y'all gotta be together to pay rent. Like that's when they get comfortable and like I can't leave the situation. That lease. Ooh, yeah. that lease and lots of people. <laughs> but in other cases, it's just like when you live with somebody, you know absolutely everything, and then you find out exactly if you want to be with that person or not. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, I can't just jump the gun and live with somebody off rip anymore. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about this in our last episode. Okay, so she brought it up. She was like, her mama told her about this phrase, saying, why buy the cow? When you get mm -hmm. the milk for free. Uh-huh. And <laughs> he's like, a, what is see, it? See, it's like an older woman term that they only tell to the younger woman. No, for sure. Wait, you gotta, you gotta it's explain a southern that to thing me. too. I mean, because like as a woman, like me... 
I always wanted to be a wife. Like, it's just something in me. Like, I, I saw, like, my grandparent, like, my grandmother, you know, serve my grandfather his plates and Amen. cook. And I like that. Mm. You well, know what I'm saying? If they're not doing that in relationships, mm. then. What? Yeah, I do all of that. I I do all the wifely I stuff. Like, that. I want to cut your toenails. I want to massage your feet. I want to massage cut your, your back. Toenails? Yeah, I want to do it all. <laughs> like, I'm wiping your face with the toner at night. Like, I like that. You know what I mean? So, it's like. Massages, you cracking bags. Yeah, all of that. Like, I'm stretching you out. Like, all of that. Yeah. And so, like, wow. if you do that too early, sometimes people get comfortable. Exactly. And that's like. Literally giving them all the milk. Why would they put the ring on your finger? Why yeah. would they pay your bills? Why would they Nothing buy the cow? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When they get the milk for free, which mm-hmm. is the the shadow of you. You know the the results yeah. of you. Yeah, I mean, in in that case, for sure, it's some things you gotta hold until y'all get married. But do you think you would ever live with a girl again after that? I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't live with a girl. I'm Before just saying marrying I her. Live. Yeah, I mean, I have to find out. I feel like that's necessary. Yeah, I have to find out Ooh, how I can be with real. you before I even put any ring. Just like sex. Like, we got to have sex before we get married. Okay. We yes. have to. Yes. We have to. Okay. I understand we that. We have to. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, I, understand, I get that, but it's I don't the same know thing. about lit. I can't do that again. I did it once. I was like, this is No, you saying it, you saying it now <laughs> because you was in a toxic situation. It was pretty But when bad. you meet somebody... You gonna want to live with them? Yeah. I mean, I have, I think, experienced the person without living with them, right, and been like, "Oh my god, this is so great. Living with you would be a dream." And then it was a like complete nightmare once we moved in together. You couldn't feel the vibe. No, it's almost like they kind of save the crazy. They lock it away until you know, well, like see, a Dr. That, Jekyll. That's, <laughs> that's true as well. I would say that because living with somebody, they can. Pl- that's why I said you that's when you know it. everything. Yeah. But when it's a good person, you want to live with them. Yeah. And I'm a person that I'm a person that likes to be by itself. I'm a I'm a loner for sure. Such an Aquarius is so for pretty. sure. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm with the right woman, I definitely live. I'll live with her. But I ain't live by myself until I move to L. A. Mm. So when I moved to LA, that's when I got the experience being by myself. Oh, and so then you that's appreciate when I was like, this long time? Yeah, I have to have a couple years by myself before I just jump the gun. Okay. <laughs> Wait, how old were you when you moved to LA? Probably like twenty five. Okay. See, because I was nineteen, so like I how was living to my. I was, I'm twenty nine now, so like oh, I literally damn. was living by myself. So when I met my man, I never had a roommate, nothing. So when I met my man, like literally the same week, I was like, "Come to my house, like we we're gonna live together, <laughs> like like right oh, he away." Was excited. But we've been together for seven years now. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's she I just feel knew. She just it's knew. the energy. Yeah, I told him like the day I met him, I was like, "I what's like the, you. I want to be with sign? you." He's a Virgo, uh, the best sign ever. <laughs> no, you know what? Virgos, Virgos get their shit done. I my my best friends are Virgo, so huge Vir- fan, Virgos huge fan. Never shit. relationship, man. Not that. <laughs> Bestie all day. But I feel like when you know, you know. I just feel like some people do hot stuff, but like I knew that like I don't want to spend a moment away from you. Like like I feel like you my person. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I feel like when you meant that other half, it's just like why wouldn't I want want to like? How would your life oh, be if man. y'all left each other? If we left each other, we would never leave each other. Like. I'm saying if it if y'all decide to like part ways, would you feel like your life is over? No, I'm whole on my own, but he is definitely the yin to my yang. Like we balance each other for sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people stay in it and then they not whole. Oh when no. When that person is gone. No, we've evolved past that. We've definitely. Gotcha. I mean, like I said, we've been together for almost seven years now, but like we've definitely been like. Dependent, that codependency that can be toxic. So real, you know thing. what I mean? Like, well, how long you going for? Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that. I've witnessed it. <laughs> like, don't. He won't let her go get no ice cream from the store. He's like, when well, you, you coming back? Coming back, right? <laughs> but now it's not toxic. It's just like I miss you. No, they're and... literally obsessed with each other. It's so yes. crazy. They're well, that's the obsessed. way it's supposed to be. You're never supposed to be jealous. You're never supposed to control people. Like, yeah, that's oh, what yeah. I hate about that's relationships in yeah. general. Like. Some some people treat relationships almost like the person is their pet. 
I don't like that. That's so sad for me to see. Yeah. Because it's like you can destroy something that's really meant to be, that's really so precious and really could work for you. But if you think for one second that you own this person, like that is not their choice to be with you. That's why like, I never liked that. I never liked when a woman say, this is my man, my man. It's like, cute sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Nah, like, it depends man, on how man, they do it. Like, if we out in public way. and she just basically... Peeing on you like oh, she a no. damn dog. Like, Me and my nah. man could go to a party. He could be all the way on the other side of the club. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're supposed to know when to step away and come together. Yeah. But a lot of people just be on you like they a part of you. Mm -hmm. And that's well, the ones I Well, I mean, like. healthy boundaries is a part of navigating those toxic spaces and those toxic relationships. What are your self boundaries first? And that's a part of the talk about being whole. Then you need to navigate the boundaries within the re the relationship, the partnership. Mm -hmm. You know, so there has to be separate types of boundaries so that you know when, okay, when this happens, I will be triggered. And I'm able to effectively communicate this is what's triggering me or this is what's crossing that boundary for me because I know what my limit is in this space. Mm -hmm. A lot of people fall when they're around other people. And yeah. especially if y'all know that person's type. And women like that or men like that come around and all of a sudden you feel like you have to act a certain way in order to show people that this is mine. Mm -hmm. That's that's the energy I don't like. And but when you crazy. cool, I know. when you that's cool. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm my man's type. Nobody yeah. else. Like, I'm a, a girl But you know cute. that without saying it. She can have a nice it. booty. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you got to know that you're your man's type. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that should be the demeanor in a relationship. I mean, it would be in a perfect world had all of these traumatic situations not taken place. Like, the trauma that you experience in previous relationships definitely passes down. I don't understand those people who break up and then the next week they are already dating. The, it's yeah. like, you didn't even reset, bruh. Yeah. Like, you need to kind of give yourself some time Let's evaluate what just happened, okay? Mm -hmm. We are now grieving a separation. We also need to figure out, what is my role in that? Because that didn't just end because of them. That mm -hmm. ended because of both of us. Mm -hmm. So let's see also now what I can do to improve on these different communication issues, lack of boundary or boundary issues I need to start setting up, self-love. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to work through that, heal through that, and then see, after all of that evaluation, am I capable of even taking on a new partnership? And what things can I not carry from this baggage into yeah. the next suitcase? You know what I mean? Right. Like, I want to advance and grow and not just be the same in every single type of connection. That's why situations where, okay, I had back-to-back -back toxic relationships. If you didn't really heal and give yourself time to reflect on what that just was. Mm -hmm. You're, You're going to keep repeating that. the same same cycle, mm -hmm. yeah. same thing over and over. Yeah, I had to learn because it was things that controlled us when we were younger. Like sex controlled me when I was younger, and I had to learn from certain women that sex is not everything. That's so it's mature. Just, it's, just, it's just one of the things. Like it was, It only took one girl to tell me, you treat me like a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. And that changed, that changed my whole dynamic with sex. Like, mm. I used to just think about myself like most men do in sex. But now, sex is not fun unless it's all about her. That's so mature. I don't know why it's not taught. Like, that's not normalized. Like, even pleasing a girl. Like, men are just... They're not taught that. You know what I mean? It's like they have to be... They nah, have to find you gotta, you gotta out. And a lot of times, it's about a girl being like... <laughs> You ain't make sure I was good. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I did. I well, was that was the one of the reasons I talked to older women because they had no problem. I'm me. letting you know. Gonna they do a no, shameless like, drop. When I, when I first went down on a girl, she moved my head in the direction where it should yeah. be. And then it's that. <laughs> like, the girls who just sit right there knowing you're doing it wrong. Like, sorry, you're supposed to be two an uh, inch to the left. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like... Like, tell me. Make it a joke. Communicate. Do something. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. I, I wish the communication wasn't so out of whack. So uh, I think you know, I've, only, I've only talked to blunt women. So That's when good. I went That's through those blessing. situations, I learned quick. And then I'm like, all right, cool. If they talk to me, I know exactly what I'm doing. Because I'm a fast learner. I don't learn quick. All you got to do is tell me. Yeah, and when you really <laughs> like somebody, you want to learn. Like, I want to mm -hmm. cater to you. I want to hit all your spots and do... Everything like I think it's sexy to give directions. 
Like, first, I want you to do this, then do this, then kiss right here, then, you know what I'm saying? Like, I well, was bad trying if, to bad find if you give the directions name. and they still terrible. I was trying to find the name of this. <laughs> I was trying to find the name of this documentary. There's a, a documentary on Netflix and it speaks about um, human sexuality and, like, it kind of flushed through this whole backdrop of how we as just beings even learned how to start having sex. It was always through whispers. It was through, oh, mm -hmm. like you and your friends keep in or whatever. Like in school, they really just kind of taught you about like the traditional thing, which is be abstinent or STDs or Diseases. condoms and yeah. stuff like that. And they really kind of made you fear the actual action out of, you know, just trying to keep teens from being teen moms. But there was never an actual sit down lesson of what like tantric things are how the actual bonding process should be and feel and it just I feel like they should do that in college not high school. I people are having sex in middle I was in middle school and girls was pregnant. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's just yeah. like Well, I'm saying like to be an adult teaching kids, I think they would feel uncomfortable. A hundred percent. But you're still gonna hear the knowledge. I feel because yeah. guys 100%. are really like guys will really be in their twenties and really not know like mm. a girl is not broken because she just ain't wet. You know what I'm saying? It's exactly. Like, exactly. Okay, did you do something to get it? Going? Exactly. Like, That's no, the worst. For sure. There, there's a <laughs> there's so much science to it. I watched this documentary on Netflix. Our guys, I'm gonna put it at the end of the episode because I gotta go and figure <laughs> out what this is. But I watched this documentary and I was just like, wow, there's things that I'm still learning about myself or. I still need to learn about the male anatomy. There's like, if you care mm -hmm. and you're willing to do the research and you're willing to do the work, mm -hmm. there's definitely a way. And I think that that's so in alignment still with love. I've and always yes. looked up shit to do something better in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Always, I always did. <laughs> I that's had hilarious. To. I had to because it'll like, get you further. It gets you scared when it's your first time. <laughs> 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 it's like shit. I want to make a good impression. Right. Just breathe and try something new. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Period. Sometimes you got to do that. Okay, so do you think that it's possible for people to grow together, like meaning change, when the relationship is already toxic? Like, do you think that it's possible for them to change within the space? Or do you think it's better for them to just kind of separate, yeah. do your own thing, and then no, come back? I mean, it all depends on if they want to change. Because it's always either one person that want to change or both of y'all want to change. And when I'm in a toxic situation, I try to change the route. I try to change the circle that we in. I'm like, all right, we normally do this, but what happens if we do this? Mm -hmm. And if that don't work, what happens if we do this? What happens if we do this? Now, if you go every route and nothing works, then I feel like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless we really, really want to make something work and I feel like I can make something work with you. I would try until we can't try no more. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you can keep doing it, but it's up to the it's up to the people that want to change it. Yeah, I always want to change it. I don't like being in toxic situations forever. Do you have a time limit on that? Are you like, okay, honey, it's been two years and mm. this just ain't? Mm -hmm. I don't really have no time limit. I feel like with me, it gets it it becomes too much when you're stressed mm -hmm. and you feel like. We shouldn't even be feeling this emotional or I feel like it's more bad days than good days or we cry way more than we <laughs> we should. Yeah. Like that's when I feel like, all right, we we doing something. Cause I don't like I've been in relationships where she would literally cry all the time. Oof. And I'm like, what am I doing? You would make me feel like the most terrible person that walked this earth. Yeah. Every single time you cry. That's the worst. <laughs> that's I'm like I'm making you feel that way. Yeah. It makes me want to leave the relationship. Okay. Okay. That is the worst. And I have to say, because I've been that girl who like, I'm, I'm sensitive. You know what I mean? Like my family called me bunny. Like I'm a soft little bunny. I'm an airy. So if I love somebody, I'm loving you all the way. And the reason why I be like, you know, I can't love everybody is because I'm just so all in. Like I'm like all in, like we're connected, you know? And so it's just like, I had to realize my accountability in that situation mm. where I'm putting my feelings out there or I'm having expectations and I'm not even letting it be known mm. and then I'm being letting down. Like, I literally have been to the point where I'm staring at my man and I'm just like, he's not looking at me. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, bitch, he's been looking at you all day. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, but I'm like, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, 
you got to understand, and that's a very like surface, you know, example, yeah. but basically in that toxic relationship or the girl who's always crying is like, okay, why are you crying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like everything. Don't look everything. for him to, to stop your tears, like prevent your tears by like helping yourself out. Self-soothe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and self-soothe. I'm not saying you can't cry. You can definitely yeah, you can. cry, but it's just like. But that daily crying, that's toxic. Yeah. Like, uh uh-uh. uh. You I woke feel up like this if morning, you cry, you're alive. Because like, I'm the type of person that adapt to your energy. Mm-hmm. So if you always bring in that energy, then I'm a I'm a adapt to I it. feel like good guys, like not to be funny, but guys who really care about you do that. And then the whole relationship is such like your aura is just so like just clinging. Like I'll be I'll be in a good mood. Drained. Yeah, like so I draining. I do think that women have a problem thinking that they need to be the center of that man's attention. He still has to go get it. Mm -hmm. He has to go and change the narrative for his family. Mm -hmm. He has to become whatever it is that he's trying to become in this life. He still has to be a, I mean, I don't know, I know we date black men, but like he has to be a black man and there's so much for him to worry about on a daily basis. Baby girl, you are not the main fucking focus all the time. And trust me, if you are, you might not be. He's not great. (laughs) Yeah. He is. Yeah, you, you might be paying all the bills for having on the air mattress for sure. <laughs> like, Jesus. I knew I left a toxic situation when she put herself on an emotional roller coaster and basically had to go to the hospital. Oh no. See, and that's that self awareness because yeah. stress kills. So don't even go there. And then it's like people don't know what happens in your household. So when you go to the hospital, either it's family or friends coming to come visit you or see you. They are automatically thinking it's your fault. Yeah, it's, yeah. They are automatically thinking that. And like, that what strain are you on doing a relationship is hard to come back from. <laughs> I think that it still doubles back to self love. You know what I it mean? Does. If you're, if all of it is gonna always the foundation for a toxic situation, there is a lack of self love going on. If you are loving yourself in the ways that you should be, you know, sometimes. Take yourself to the movies. Mm-hmm. Take yourself Man, to get that. a I'll little dinner and drink. I love taking myself out to eat and I get th- a drink. I like. think that's the top That's the top thing right there. I've dealt with a lot of women that don't know how to be by themselves. Yes. Yeah. That's the top thing. It's like that's toxic. when I tell them, go take a trip. Right. Do it by yourself. Do it with some friends. We don't always have to do every single thing together. It's draining. Mm-hmm. We do not. Go have fun. I'm we not doing. We shouldn't do every single thing together. Yeah, <laughs> we should. Extremely draining. Uh, we did that in high school. We ain't gotta do that now. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, it's like you said. It's definitely the codependency. Like this, when this person becomes your person, it's understandable that you end up developing that. Just like you know, when that cubby isn't there, it's like, oh, where's that space is not filled. But I think. You don't have to lose sight of yourself just because you join in a union. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to walk my path on this journey and fulfill the purpose that God has for me. You are supposed to walk your path and fulfill the purpose that God has for you. And we walk alongside each other, holding each other's hand. Like, that's how it's supposed to be. That's a power couple. Yeah. Yeah. No matter who I date, whether we had a bad or good relationship, I always try to make sure that they're a boss. Yeah. Because if you're not a boss, then I can't date you anyway. Yeah. But I'm going to always make sure that whatever you haven't went through in your life, that you're going to get through it. You're going to succeed in whatever you do, rather you with me or not. Thanks. I tell anybody, I'm like, rather we together in the future or not, you mm-hmm. just need to be a boss-ass bitch. Period. I'm not calling women a bitch, no, but, but I'm just I, saying. I've got the narrative. <laughs> I get it. He's a husband, ladies. Okay, so he's letting you ladies know now. Here we are. I've never, I've never been that person to, like, if we move on, I'm not interrupting your relationship if yeah. you find somebody. Yeah. Because if you find somebody that makes like, you more happy, why would I ruin that? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so, okay, would you have any lasting thoughts that you want to leave the people with regarding toxic relationships, toxic love, different ways to navigate, like any final thoughts? If it's not helping you grow, then stay out of it. If it's just something that you linger on to just because it's exciting or you're used to it or if it's comfortable that's not right Mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta find something that's gonna help you grow your soul your spirit and just your mind because it's a lot of people that can do that for you but if you stick to one person you ain't gonna never grow it's like blocking your blessing amen Mm -hmm. so you'll never want to block your blessing yes god Mm. rather you by yourself or you meet somebody who is for you 
about to have church up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. No, I'm just playing. Okay, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here, Carrie. Like, we are just so grateful to have your time. For sure. This is like the first time that you've been on the podcast. Hopefully you come Y'all back. put me on that. What you about to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just heard Tony say that. Oh. No, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what are you about to do? Like, is there anything coming up? Like, yes. is there anything that we should look out for yes. or you're excited to do? Well, I ain't shit coming up with these strikes, but, um. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not funny, but <laughs> If y'all don't know what you're talking about, the WGA and the SAG, which are the Writers Guilds in um, Entertainment, we are on a strike officially as of today. This is July... 13th that we are filming this episode so by the time you see this hopefully the strike is over but we outside pounding the pavement i mean other than that you know we just working on projects to either pitch or we just working on projects to put out because you know we got so many ideas and we just want to put out ideas because we creatives yes i like your boobs by the way them shits are fire but I appreciate y'all, man. Yes. Y'all exactly. keep doing y'all thing. We appreciate you. Black, strong women. Oh. You want to see it? <laughs> <laughs> Out here All turning right. heads. We appreciate you. So for sweet. Sure. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Love Is. I am definitely going to drop the links of the Netflix episode in the comments below. So check out that. And as always, love is everything. So we'll see y'all next time. Bye. I'm about to get that tatted. It's the peace sign for me. It's the <laughs> double peace sign. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Love Is Podcast. Remember to like, share, and subscribe.